Shireen here and welcome back to Beauty Editing 101. Today I'm going to teach you how to film and edit to get the Pat McGrath Instagram video aesthetic. Stick around till the end because I'm also going to show you a quick Photoshop editing trick to obtain the same look for pictures. Let's begin. <music> Who is Pat McGrath? Pat McGrath is the world's most influential editorial and runway makeup artist. She's also known for her editorial Instagram videos, amongst other things like her makeup line at Sephora. The key features for her videos include soft, blurred skin, sparkly shimmers especially for eyeshadow, bright lighting, a glitch effect, and a flare effect which you can see on shiny objects like makeup brushes and lipsticks. So in this clip right here, this is the eye look that we are basically going to be recreating. Well, I mean, not the whole eye look. I'm going to show you how to get the effect. I'm going to keep the eye makeup very basic, but of course, for your own videos, go ahead and do a full blown tutorial. I'm just going to show you how to get the look, you know, like filming and editing wise. To get that soft blurred skin effect, take a piece of plastic food wrap and wrap it over your lens. Secure it with a rubber band and pull the edges so the plastic lies as taut as possible over the lens. Next, get some Vaseline on your finger and smear it over the part of the plastic that is covering your lens. With tissue paper, make a small circle in the center of the lens to gently remove some Vaseline. You don't want to completely remove the Vaseline here, but rather remove a layer, so to speak. I'm going back in with clean fingers to further remove some Vaseline from the center. This is going to help keep us in focus while still having a soft blur effect instead of having the whole frame heavily blurred. Now, what if you only have an iPhone? No problemo. Apply lotion to your hands per usual. I'm using Vanna Cream because it's perfect for my sensitive skin. This is basically like a two-in-one step because you're getting smooth skin in real life and on camera. You're welcome. Okay, now rub your finger over the iPhone lens a few times. Boom! Instant blur effect. Side note, I think this works better with the newer iPhones like the XS Max here because of the casing. Older iPhone users, do this at your own risk. To remove it, simply rub it off with fabric or, in my case, my cardigan. Good as new. Figuring out the lighting for these shots is super easy. Simply look at the catch light, aka that white reflection in the model's eyes. Here, the catch light is circular and at the top right, meaning they most likely used a ring light placed up and to the right of the model, facing down about 45 degrees. If you had any doubts about the ring light in the previous pictures, well, this certainly confirms it. Look at the black hole in the center of the catch light. So obvious. To make things even more blatantly obvious, they gave away their lighting in a recent Instagram video. Right here. Let's take a look at this. They're using an LED light from below to light the model's face and the lenses over here to the right. Now, we're not going to be doing this. Lighting from below is actually more horror lighting. You'll see it in a bunch of horror movies. It's more of a frightening effect. So what we're going to be doing is lighting from above because it's more flattering, especially for beauty shots. Let me walk you through my lighting setup. Ignore my umbrella, you don't need that for this. I just had it up from a previous setup and didn't feel like taking it down. I have my newer CN160 dimmable LED light turned on to full brightness and mounted on my Joby Gorilla Pod. The legs are wrapped around this mount on my Manfrotto light stand. The great thing about the Gorilla Pod is that you can wrap it around basically anything, so you don't necessarily need a light stand, but it does make it easier to adjust. I have the light set up and over to the left facing down toward me. You can place the light either on the left or right, it's up to you. I chose left because I'm filming my right eye and want the catch light more on the left side. You'll see what I mean in a sec. If you have a ring light, go ahead and use that. I don't have one, so that's why I'm using this. That white sheet in the back acts as a bounce for light to give the natural light coming in through my window a soft effect on the left side of my face. You don't necessarily have to do this either. All you really need to do is set up that one light. I'm filming on my Canon T6i using a 50mm lens. I had my ISO at 800, aperture at f5.0, and shutter at 1 over 60. 
I also have my frame rate at 60 frames per second, or technically 59.94 frames per second on my T6i, so I can slow down the video in post. I'll explain this further when we get to editing. If you don't want a slow-mo effect, just film at 24 frames per second. Anywho, remember how I was telling you I wanted the catch light on the left side of my eye? There it is. Isn't it beautiful? I just moved my light closer to me to get a more intense flare effect on the shiny parts of my buxom lip gloss. This is all the power of that DIY blur filter and lighting. No editing or Kira Kira app necessary. Now I'm adjusting my light again. This time I'm lowering it so the light is mainly facing down toward my lips since we're moving onto the lips close up shot. To get the shot on my iPhone, I placed my phone on this The Voice mount secured on my Gorillapod. Use the front camera for the highest quality, flip around your phone, and film. I'm using only natural lighting for this shot because I want to show you that you can still get that soft blurry look without artificial lighting. But of course, the lighting does help amplify shimmers and create those beautiful flares. So I'm using Final Cut Pro and I have a square canvas open. I also already have my clips set in the order that I want in my timeline. If you don't know how to do this, I have a whole in-depth tutorial about how to edit Instagram videos in Final Cut Pro and export in high quality. So check that out and come back to this. I'll link it in the description below. Okay, so all of my clips are at 100% right now. They're at normal speed. I'm going to slow them down to 50% with the exception of this one right here where I'm taking out the lipstick. I think that one's at a fine speed. Honestly, this is all personal preference, but because I did film this at 60 frames per second, I can go ahead and slow this down and the video is going to look really smooth and cinematic. It's just going to be so beautiful. I know that in Pat's tutorials, she does actually speed them up, but again, this is personal preference. I think this looks really beautiful and dramatic, so this is what we are going to be doing. Now, you'll notice that my face, or my eye rather, isn't taking up the whole screen. Both of my eyes are in there, it just looks kind of odd right now. So what we're going to do is scale up these clips. I'm going to start off with my eye first. So let's scale this up to, let's do like 247 for now and we'll just kind of gauge it from there. So now we're going to go in clip by clip and start to reposition the clip so that my eye is filling up the frame. Okay, 247 was actually a little bit too zoomed in, so let's bring this back out a little bit. Mm, 189 is looking better. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually make all of these 189 as well. And now we're just going to go back and clip by clip, select them, and then reposition them. I'm just doing a rough repositioning right now. We're going to go back in a sec and make sure that everything is actually aligned and looking really smooth. Okay, so to make sure that everything is aligned, we're going to toggle back and forth between each pair of clips. So I'm going to drag this little selector over to the end where both of the clips meet and we're just going to press the left and right arrow to go back and forth and make sure that the positions are relatively in the same spot. So this one, I did change the way my eyebrow was lifting. That's why it looks different. So I think that's fine. We're just going to keep that. Let's move over to the next one. Ooh, okay. Actually, Oh, I just changed my eyebrow position, huh? Okay, whatever. I think that's fine. Let's go to the next one. Hmm. You know what? Let's actually move this over a little bit. Okay, I'm going to play this back in a sec and we'll make some more fine-tuned adjustments if we have to, but I think this is okay. All right, let's go ahead and play this. Let's see. Do you see how right now it looks very smooth with all these sparklies and like everything looks so beautiful and dramatic? That's because of the 60 frames per second. If you film this in just 23 or 29, you're not going to get the same effect. Since those are lower frame rates, the clips would look more jumpy, whereas this looks very smooth. 
Okay, I think the positioning is fine. Let's move over to these last two clips. So this one, I didn't slow down because I think the way that I did this is kind of slow enough and it's fine. And actually what I prefer to do with these product shots is to have it start off like this and then I'll trim down just a chunk from the center and then speed it up. I think that just gives it a cooler effect and especially for something like Instagram where our attention spans are pretty slow, <laughs> I think this is a nice way to hold the audience's attention. Let's go ahead and give this a watch. Yeah, I think that's perfect. Okay, so this one, let's go ahead and reposition and scale this as well. Start off with 247. Ooh, I think that's actually <laughs> really good. Let's just bring it up a little tiny bit. And then I'm gonna go ahead and center the lips. So there's two ways to reposition. You could either press this icon right here and just drag and drop wherever you want, or you can make fine tune adjustments by scrolling through this. I like to toggle back and forth between both. It's just preference, whatever is easiest for you, but I really like doing this part for more fine tune adjustments. So that's looking good to me. Let's go ahead and just watch how this plays into the next clip. Cool. Okay, so let's add in that glitch effect. So to do that, I'm going to drag and drop in this VHS glitch overlay. You want to make sure that you're inserting this on top of your clip, not below it. That way, you know, the effect will actually show. So let's go ahead and have this fill the frame. Hello. Oh, my computer's being slow. Okay, so now we're going to go up and we're going to change the blend mode to screen. Now you can go ahead and scrub through this and pick the kind of VHS effect that you want. For Pat's videos, I noticed that she has more of a horizontal glitch. So let's go to somewhere like here. Mm, nope, not that. Here. Something like this is exactly what she has on her videos. So let's go ahead and cut this about right here. I'm going to press B for the blade tool to go ahead and make that cut. We're going to select this by pressing A, delete, and then we can delete this too. Actually, it would delete this if we don't do that. Hold on. <laughs> Let me drag this all the way up to here, and then you can go ahead and press B to make another cut. Back to A, select these two, delete. Okay, so now if we scrub through this, let it play, you'll see that we instantly have that glitch effect added. It's so easy and like anybody can do it, honestly. This glitch effect is free. You can find it by searching on YouTube for VHS overlay. The video has like a million views. You can't miss it. In that video, there is a free download link. I'll leave the video linked down below in my description. That way it'll just be easier for you guys to find. So go ahead and check that out. Okay, the last thing that we can do is add some music. This isn't necessary, but it's just something that I like to do. You'll notice that in Pat's videos, she doesn't necessarily have music, especially for those eye tutorials, but I like music. So let's see. Mm -hmm. Right here. So I'm going to trim down this clip. And then let's just drag this to the beginning. I'm going to get rid of this. And then delete that. What I like to do is drag this part of the audio in a little bit. This is going to give you some time for the audio to build up so it's not as harsh of a start. It's basically like a fade in and fade out. Let's play this and see what this sounds like. Love it. Love it. So good. Okay, now real quick, if you really want the whole Pat McGrath vibe, we're going to go ahead and take all of these clips right here and we're going to speed them up to 2x and then same thing with the slip one. This is more true to life with how Pat's videos are on Instagram. Very sped up, very quick. And then we're just going to trim these down.
boom perfect but i'm gonna go back and make them slower because that's just what i prefer to get the blurry soft focus dreamy effect in photoshop open up your image make sure to select your layer and then duplicate it by pressing command j you can also right click on that layer and press duplicate layer now go back to that layer one copy go over to filter blur motion blur i'm going to keep my distance to 10 pixels and then press ok instantly you can see that that gave us a blurry effect but what I'm going to do is turn on the opacity to 40% because I want it to be a little bit more subtle. Now making sure that the copy layer is still selected, I'm going to press the up arrow four times and the right arrow four times. And then I'm going to repeat that and do it all over again. You can mess around with the amount of pixels that you shift over the image. So you could do less or more than what I'm doing, but I find that going up and to the right eight pixels is perfect for me. What this is going to do is throw off the axis of the image to give it even more of a blurry effect. So it's not laying directly on top of the image, it's slightly shifted over, just like that. It's very subtle, but it makes such a huge difference and is so easy. So that is it. Now you know how to edit like Pat McGrath. It's super easy, right? Leave a comment down below if your mind is blown how easy this is because honestly, it's pretty easy. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and check out my Beauty Editing 101 playlist for more editing tutorials. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye!